of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us take some moment to present to God the intentions of our hearts for this Mass. Remember to pray for all who have requested our prayers for them. We ask that God Almighty will continue to look upon us in favor, upon our family members, upon our friends and relatives, upon all those who have requested our prayers for them. May God bless us. May God keep us safe from harm and from danger. May God prosper us and prosper the works of our hands. May we have cause for rejoicing every day of our lives. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault. Show my most grievous fault. Therefore, as Blessed Virgin Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Oh my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Amen. 
of passion is for those who fear him. For he knows of what we have been. He remembers that we are dust. For the mercy of the Lord is everlasting upon those who know him in fear. Upon children's children is justice for those who keep his covenant. I will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, I will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, I will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, unto the Lord, hallelujah.
fight. Struggle. Struggle to the last point. Struggle to the last point. Even if it means that you have to shed your blood. And this struggle requires what is called self-discipline. Self-discipline or self-control. In pidgin English, you say, nobody has to tell they do you. Eh? You go take behave. It's not I'm testy, I'm testy, I'm testy. Somebody will bring a cup of acid for you and say, I'm testy. You carry acid, you will drink chili. You wonder how you say, I'm testy. That is acid, though. You are just, not be so. I'm testy, but I will not drink it. It requires the ability to be able to discipline yourself. That is why the book of Hebrews goes on to say it is for discipline that you have to endure. You have to endure for the sake of discipline. A training in discipline. You know, power over others is weakness disguised as strength. True power comes from within. A powerful person is not somebody who controls thousands of millions. A powerful person is someone who has control over himself. Someone that you say, ah, that one, no matter what you do, he will not bend. That is how he is. That is a powerful person. That is a powerful person. And some people will say, ah, 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 eh, all human beings can be bought. Just name your price. Say that one. Hey, if you like, name 10 million. Ask him to tell one lie. He will not lie. Give him 1 billion. He will not tell a single lie. That is a powerful person. That is somebody that is not moved. He's not moved by anything. He's not moved by money. He's not moved by people. It's not, it, 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 nothing, nothing brings such a person down. And that is what all of us as Christians should be. You see, the word discipline is closely related with the word disciple. To be a disciple is to be disciplined. Only two disciples will accept to discipline themselves. True disciples will accept to struggle and to suffer rather than fall into sin. As disciples of God, the book of Hebrews tells us that God, from time to time, God sends us training. Training. You know, good act is the training. So, the training that God gives us is called discipline so that we can be better disciples. Because without discipline, we cannot be disciples. And you see, this word discipline also relates with learning. That is why in some places they refer to uh, subjects. When you are in school, certain subjects are called discipline. As in, it's called, I always wonder, why do they call a subject discipline? Physics, physics discipline, biology discipline. That is training in physics, training in biology, training in different aspects, training that requires not luxury now, but <laughs> suffering, so to say. Because all learning is suffering, all training is suffering. Any training that does not involve suffering, so to say, that does not involve discipline, is not complete training. When you are going to school, you are not happy. If you even ask this our children now that are going to school, are you happy going to school? They will, they will tell you they would rather prefer to stay at home and play video game and just sleep and wake up. 
But at the end of the day, 20 years to come, they will say, Mommy, thank you that you sent me to school. Thank you for all that I went through. So, is, is, is God also disciplines us. They will be disciplining our children by sending them to school. And sometimes this discipline of God, it comes as painful situations and painful circumstances. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor lose courage when you are punished by Him. God can punish us, but for our good do. Not because God does not like us. Not because God does not answer prayers. Because when we are going through the discipline of the Lord, it is not a funny experience. No discipline is sweet. No discipline is sweet. It's just like being flogged by your parents. How many of us were flogged as children here? If you were not flogged as a child, you miss something. You need to go back. You need to go back again and be a child so that they will flog you. It's not, it's not a funny thing though when you are being flogged though, especially by your parents, but it is always for good. And God loves us from time to time. He said, For the Lord disciplines him whom he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. Those who are very close to God, they tend to suffer more. Have you noticed that? Those who are very, very close to God, their experience is not always easy. They suffer. They tend. It's like it's like uh, those that God loves, uh, but then they suffer pass. But then they suffer pass. Why? It's just I don't I don't know why, but it's just the truth. It's just the reality. And when you say you will not discipline your child, you will not flog your child. Your child will not do anything. Your child will not cook. He will not clean house. He will not wash his clothes. He will not arrange his bed. He will not do anything. You employ servant to be doing it. And you are flogging the servant. You are training the servant. Those servants that are doing all those work, they are being trained. And they will grow up to become responsible people. And your child, that you say, he will not, I will not flog my child. Your child will grow up to be an irresponsible person. They will grow up not knowing anything. So you see, discipline is good too. The Lord disciplines those whom he loves. Never regret a day in your life. Good days give happiness. Bad days give experience. And worse days give lessons. Best days give memories. Never regret any day in your life. For the moment, all discipline seems painful. Later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those trained by it. For the moment, all discipline seems painful. It seems painful. But it yields, it yields peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. Are you currently experiencing pain and discipline from the Lord? Stop praying that it will end. Rather, pray that you will get the full fruits from this pain that you are going through. May we never suffer for nothing. If we suffer, let us enjoy because of our suffering. Stop thinking, start asking God that He should show you what this suffering is meant for. He should show you the full picture and then you will be able to smile. Even in the midst of your pain, you can say, God, oh, I know that you are leading me somewhere. Indeed, we cannot but agree with St. Paul that all things work together unto good for them that love God. If God so loves you and yet allows you to cry, it's because you need to cry so that you can smile. 
that tears you share, you don't share it for nothing. Because God cannot be so wicked as to allow you suffer for nothing. Just as you will not just wake up in the morning, your child has not done anything to you. Your child will not offend you. You don't wake up in the morning, call your child, go, go, papa, go, go, go. Who will do that in his right senses? Uh, okay, let's assume that some human beings can do that. Uh, because maybe some screws are loose from their brain. But not God. God will not do that. God will not just send you suffering just for nothing. I've never seen a student who does not complain about school. A student who doesn't feel stressed by learning. Learning is not funny. That is why the book of Hebrews says, lift up your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees. Find a way to smile so as not to miss the lessons God is sending you. Don't be a bad student. Don't give up on learning just because you find the subject that is the discipline too hard. In today's gospel passage, Jesus is in his own town, in his own country, in his own home, and people were looking down on him. They said, where did this man get all this from? And Jesus says, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. This saying is true. We have a tendency to look down on what is ours. Jesus was respected every other place, but in his own country, he could. He, he was considered the son of a carpenter. Someone once said, it is easier for a black man from Kenya to become the president of America than for that same black man to become a president of Kenya. Of course, we are never appreciated in our own home. Like Jesus is kids folk, we need to ask ourselves today, why do I look down on what is my own? Why do I look down on what is my own? Why, what is stopping me from seeing beyond the carpenter's son? Why is it that I cannot see the hand of God even in the midst of this painful situation I am facing now? May God bless his words in our hearts.
it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give the thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy redeemed him through Christ our Lord, through him the angels, friends, and majesty, dominions, adore, and pass tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O oh Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy them for this gift to pray by sending down your spirit upon them that they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by thinking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Augustine, our Cobese, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, he said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God,
Spirito, do Pai, do Sol, do Meu Espírito. Most servants are not of Jesus, who are called hearts of me, sent out and out of spiritual communion of my Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most of the sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you to my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my house. I praise you I say we were already there. I unite myself only to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is a reminder this coming Friday, which is uh, next tomorrow, is the first Friday of the month of February. And it also falls uh, on the 5th of February, which is the feast of St. Agatha. So we are going to celebrate this feast of St. Agatha on a spiritual level. I encourage all of us to be here. First Friday, devotion. Let us be a part of it to start by 4 o'clock on Friday. Please let us all join in this celebration, this spiritual celebration. The Lord be with you. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Amen.